Hi to you all and welcome to our presentation on IKEA to Asian markets. Uh, I'm Tommy and I'm presenting with Han. And here you can see our introduction to our presentation and term paper. So our general idea was to utilize the internationalization theories to explain IKEA's internationalization in Asian market. The objectives of our report were why did IKEA internationalize in Asia? Uh, how did they internationalize in Asian markets? The sequence of internationalization process and learnings from IKEA. And we also propose some recommendations for IKEA in the end. Uh, the agenda for the presentation. So first I'll just quickly tell you a little bit about the company. Then we look at the internationalization motives, uh, barriers and risks, the internationalization process and stages and compare them to some academic models. And then we conclude the presentation. So just very quickly overview of the company. So I think everyone knows IKEA. It's a originally a Swedish furniture company. It was founded in 1943. It has 457 stores in 62 different markets and 77 of the stores are in Asia. They started off internationalization quite early in the 1960s, and they are most famous for self-assembled and flat-packed furniture. And yes. now I hand, yes, please go ahead, Han. Yes, uh, thank you, Tommy. Um, according to the research of Duning in 2088 about the international motivation, uh, Duning uh, invent, uh, like proposed uh, for uh, motivation, first is market seeking. That that happened when the home countries is sheer, uh, saturated, highly competitive, and that is the same happen but in the case of IKEA. And south row uh, and uh, high volume is the uh, is very vital for IKEA. And uh, when looking for the market, Asian with the rapid economic role and the huge population can solve uh, the problem of IKEA. Um, for efficiency seeking, um, they want to uh, build up the business structure and uh, and expand uh, their scale and scope. Uh, besides that, they want to gain some benefit from the uh, to, for example, like lowering tax burden or risk de diversification. Uh, so that's why in Asian market they will like allocate the finance, tech base, and info intensive activity in developing country labor and the research based activities in the developing country. For the research seeking, um, as you already know, China is, um, they have both benefit the marketplace and also provide the raw, the cheap raw material and about the um, uh, cheap labor. So uh, to secure the physical resource line, raw material and labor, um, um, IKEA moved to Asian uh, market because they want to maintain the stable supply chains and maximize the profits and also like optimize the production production costs by building a lot of factory in Asia. And at that moment when uh, IKEA uh, conquer Japan and China, at that time they have the oil crisis. So when they are like offshoring to Asian market can help them to optimize the uh, logistic costs as well. For the strategic uh, access nowadays, after uh, the uh, sustainable uh, sustainability is a com strong commitment of IKEA, so they are looking for uh, another market who can provide the unique and particular skill set, know-how, knowledge, and strategic supply. For example, the case when they build up the circular uh, economy project in Taiwan market, that can help them to secure the core competencies, also build up the competitive advantage. But nowadays is the context. Uh, is quite complex, so that's why uh, our theory also need to be updated with a lot of like uh, um, international relation motive, like the emerging motive, competitive positioning, global scanning and learning, like they, they explore to the new market to just like build up the head to head better field with their competitor. Um, uh, and besides that, we can like take the Nairin motive for motor means at the, the like the example to have the comprehensive uh, picture of motivation. Um, what is the barrier when uh, IKEA's uh, internationalization? 
First is about the psychic distance. That is very important uh, barrier because that's bring to the value for the first round they conquer Japan market. Um, psychic distance is different in the language, culture, and political system. In Asia, have very high power distance culture. They don't refer to do it yourself, and they refer to home delivery, and they live in a small space, uh, small town. So that's why the European um, furniture doesn't fix with the uh, Asian market. That's a very tough market. Like uh, China require IKEA 55 years to enter. Uh, for the Japan's, they require two rounds to enter that and uh, to like um, connect to like minimize the distance. They use the local uh, localization strategy. For example, in China, they uh, translate their name into China names. Uh, with the strategic decision uh, marking process, uh, it's also like the limited information with poor understanding. So that's why they come up with an inappropriate plan. And they meet with a lot of difficult in the legal and government issue. So that's why they need to build up the market specific knowledge to uh, uh, bring bridging the gap with the pricing strategy. Um, the, uh, the next is about the adaptation degree of IKEA offer. Uh, because when they bring the you the replicate strategy, uh, they have very low adaptation in the new market. So that's why uh, IKEA come up with the strategy of flexible replication. That means they adapt the local life, but they still uh, continue to educate Japanese uh, about the benefit of the flat uh, pack. It's very fun, easy, and like uh, have a lot of benefit. For the entry strategy, first round come to uh, Japan, they come up with the franchising to renew the financial risk, but they fail. So for the second round, uh, they come up because they, they uh, got a lot of subsidy uh, because the Asian market they open a lot for the foreign uh, company. So that's why they refer their own subsidies. Um, for the org organization and management uh, characteristic, also the barrier when we are um, um, internet, uh, when we go abroad, uh, for example, like when the first time IKEA come to uh, Japan with the small size of store, they got less attention. So that's why they are standardized their store with the improvement to open the first new mega store with like more than 4,000, 40,000 square meter. And um, for the management, they are strengthen the relationship with um, uh, supplier uh, to fill the gap of insufficient supply chains. Uh, next, I, I will over for Tommy for the stage of internationalization. Thank you. So we looked into the stages and entry modes, how IKEA has uh, entered different markets. So we can see that they have had mixed strategy of different modes. Uh, they have their own subsidiaries, they have joint ventures, and they do have franchising as well to mitigate the risk in different markets. Uh, Countries, for example, that have their own subsidiaries are uh, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Germany, US. So we could say that they are countries with fairly low psychic distance. Then they have joint ventures, for example, in market China and countries with franchising include co uh, com countries, for example, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, Hong Kong, Malaysia. And they also have within the same market, they might mix them up. So for example, in Australia, Australia and Spain, they have uh, both own subs subsidiary and franchising. Then uh, to look more in detail, like Han was actually telling you a little bit earlier as well. So for example, in Japan, they ended with the franchising model. Uh, they lacked the marketing consumer understanding they had insufficient supplies and that led to poor financial performance and they exited the whole market and then after the deregulation of japanese large retail store law and the removal of barriers of foreign consumer goods they re-entered the japanese market in 2006 and they had the freedom and therefore they started their wholly owned own um, subsidiary enterprise in Japan with updated concept. 
Uh, then a little bit from the point of view of networking model. So IKEA has built different networks from joint ventures to franchising. And in Asia markets, especially the trust and personal relationships are very highly valued. And it can be said that IKEA is very early started in most markets uh, with disruptive concept among traditional furniture companies. On the sourcing side of business, they started internationalization already in the 1960s, and there was actually an interesting motive to do so. Uh, Swedish suppliers started boycotting IKEA, and therefore they were forced to start supplying or getting supplies from other markets, and they started from Poland, and they still have some of the same Polish suppliers that they started relationship in the 1960s. And then just quickly looking through the Blue Ocean strategy. So IKEA is used to being the most, uh, or in most markets, they are used to being the price leader and they have the most competitive price. However, in Asia, they were struggling because, for example, when they started in China, they were far too expensive. Uh, Chinese manufacturers were a lot cheaper, so they had to reimagine themselves and recreate the value of their products and of their business to the customers. So they actually uh, kind of differentiated themselves from the market with their products, with their design and with their brand. And they also had to adapt to the markets and bring value to the customers by being closer to the cities and closer to the public transportation. Then the waterfall or shower models, uh, you can see all the dots on the map. So those are the markets where IKEA is at the moment and the different colors tell you what decade they entered the market. So in the beginning, uh, 1960s, they entered Denmark and Norway, so close by. So it could be said that it was definitely a waterfall to start with. And then already in the 1970s, they are all over the world. So First, they started off with developed countries. So in that sense, they continue with the waterfall model. But then after that, it was definitely a shower uh, of geographically and also from different kinds of markets. And quickly about the famous Uppsala model. So IKEA definitely started off with the Uppsala model in Denmark and Norway nearby. But then already in the next uh, decade, they jumped uh, quite a few hoops and, and started expanding to countries with very large psychic distance. So I would say that they skipped uh, Uppsala model already by the end of 1970s. And now our conclusions, Han, go ahead, please. Uh, thanks, Tommy. After we analyze the internationalization process of IKEA and do uh, what we're learning from IKEA, First, uh, to be the king of furniture in over the world, uh, I can need to maintain the competitive advantage, which including the golden triangle, affordable, accessible and sustainable. Affordable, they try to uh, optimize the production costs uh, to make profits and provide the affordable price uh, for everyone can buy IKEA products. Accessible, the only way like try to approach the consumer in multi touch point. Uh, for for sustainable, that is a strong commitment of IKEA to uh, um, develop in the sustainable way. Um, besides that, the international strategies um, they are uh, quite flexible. A lot of uh, strategy. First is about the same uh, standardization. With the standardization uh, strategy, that can help IKEA to uh, expand. Uh, and uh, go to a lot of countries in very fast for the localization and they are like respect the culture of the new market uh, but they use the flexible replication like uh, local life but to keep the value propositioning of uh, Swedish furniture brand uh, and throughout the value of the story when they conquer Japan's we, we can understand like market specific knowledge is very important and we need to spend a lot of uh, budget on research to understand the, the consumer and also understand the psychic culture, the, the culture different, uh, the culture distant. And customer, the first is the motto of the IKEA to be successful. 
for the theory and framework beside what we are studying in the uh, uh, in our lecture. Um, we, we can uh, utilize the updated internationalization motive to uh, understand the motivation, the, the driver for IKEA to uh, go abroad. And uh, we also uh, suggest the network seeking beside the market resource or strategic access because like uh, looking for the partnership or build up a strong relationship, strong supplier is also the uh, the reason or the, or the motivation for IKEA to go to Asian market. And uh, although IKEA is not born uh, global according to Uppsala model, but uh, they have the different age design, highly distinct products, or they target very niche market with the scalable capability to reach wider audience, though are the characteristic of born global enterprise. Um, then we come up with two recommendations for IKEA. Uh, first, because IKEA already built up the very successful business model, so they can strengthen the current business model by technology value and uh, uh, sustainable commitment. Uh, for and they can think about to expand for social uh, for South American market because South American markets uh, different but quite similar with Asian because they have a high uh, psychic um, gap, high psychic uh, differences. So um, IKEA can take the value and successful story, successful learning from Asia market to move to expand to global, uh, to do South America. And that is all for our presentation. Thanks so much for your time.